can see we're working on those ground attack aircraft pretty pretty well. Just like that, folks. Greetings and salutations, fellow pilots. This is Akira Shin. I am very excited to bring you in this video the British Tier 10 Heavy Fighter, Gloucester Javelin. It has taken me a while to get this heavy fighter, but uh, now I have it and I am happy to show it off to you. Very nice looking fighter. Uh, one of the few fighters that does not have a rear gun but a second uh, cockpit occupant. Not sure what that second occupant does. I imagine in real life he's probably some sort of radar operator or in charge of firing ordnance, but. Um, as far as I can tell, in this game, doesn't do anything. <laughs> Keeps us company, in case we get lonely on the long flights. So, the Javelin has four 30mm cannons, each of which do 330 damage per second, and have a low-medium rate of fire of 300 rounds per minute. However, the 30 millimeters do have a very good effective firing range of 800 meters, which is pretty important for an aircraft uh, that is often fighting at high altitudes. So my build for the Javelin is a little different than other heavy fighters. Uh, usually with heavy fighters, I focus on engine-related upgrades. However, with the Javelin, I have modified my typical approach to upgrades. So, much like with aircraft that have very high maneuverability, I do not equip any additional uh, upgrades or consumables that relate to maneuverability because that is kind of already taken care of. And here the Javelin has very high airspeed. Uh, not just good, not just high, but very high airspeed. And in fact if you look at the stats for that you see that it is the stat for airspeed is almost maxed out. So from my perspective, why do more than that? Our consumables and our upgrades could be better spent on improving other aspects of the aircraft. So my typical build of engine tuning 4 and improved aircraft polish, which increase the uh, aircraft's speed and engine performance I have not equipped on the Javelin. Instead, I have chosen to, number one, improve its maneuverability. Now, nothing we do on this aircraft is going to make it uh, a particularly maneuverable aircraft, but I did want to improve it at least somewhat and for that purpose I have equipped improved flaps 3 which does two things first of all it increases by 20 percent efficiency of airspeed reduction with idle and I find that to be important in the sense that you know many times we're getting behind slower aircraft like you know bombers or uh, ground attack aircraft that are high survivability aircraft but tend to be slower and we need to be able to slow down 
uh, on some of those occasions if tactically it's a good decision. What do I mean by that? Well, you know, if it's just us and the uh, ground attack aircraft or the bomber, well then, you know, zoom and boom is not necessarily something we need to do. We could, you know, just kind of park behind that aircraft and just use our uh, very powerful 30 millimeter cannons to burn it down. Um, so we need to be able to uh, decelerate and to uh, maintain that slower speed when we need to. Also, of course, the increased uh, maneuverability does help this aircraft. Um, the Javelin is stated to have good survivability, so not high survivability. So I see that as an area where this aircraft has a strength but a strength that could be improved. And for that reason, I have chosen to go with improved covering four, which I have found to be very effective in other aircraft. And what it does is it increases uh, our aircraft's hit points by 5%, and it also decreases the chance of critical damage to wings and tail by a whopping 20%. So that's a pretty huge, pretty huge benefit there. And since speed and altitude are two of the greatest strengths of this aircraft, I think it's important to make sure we don't get critical damage to wings and tail because uh, those components of our aircraft are vital to, to maintaining that strength, be able to use that strength. Now, as a pilot, I often struggle with getting these 30 millimeter cannons to find their target. Um, and some of that is that, you know, a lot of times we're dealing with very high speed enemy aircraft and I tend to not lead as much as I should. So that's something I've been working on as a pilot. But even, you know, leading more, I still have difficulty putting rounds on the target with a 30 millimeter. So, to help that, I have equipped improved radio sight, which increases firing accuracy by 15%. And in terms of pilot skills, again, normally for a heavy fighter of this nature, I would equip Engine Guru 1 and Engine Guru 2, to, but instead, I have done something different here with the Javelin, and I have equipped Marksman 1 and Marksman 2. Uh, so Marksman 1 reduces dispersion of forward firing weapons by 5%. Marksman 2 also reduces dispersion of forward firing, forward firing weapons by 5% but it also increases accuracy of firing at actively maneuvering targets by 10%. And that's all cumulative to Marksman 1. So we've decreased the dispersion of our forward firing weapons by a whopping 10%, which is huge, huge. But also uh, increased our accuracy which has good synergy with improved radial sight that we equipped as a, an upgrade. And I have found that this combination of accuracy and dispersion reducing has really helped me as a pilot to get more rounds on the target. Now I've also equipped Aerodynamics Expert and I have equipped that because it improves the effects of improved flaps three. Now you could also go with protection expert, which would improve the effects of our improved covering. Another viable option would be to choose aerobatics expert, which increases maneuverability in all axes by 2%.
looking at ammunition, I have equipped universal ammunition, which has a high chance of critical damage and about a medium chance of fire. The javelin is stated to have good survivability but large dimensions. So as I've mentioned with other similar aircraft, having large dimensions means that it's a big old target up there. Uh, and you'll see that, you know, as I'm flying it, the javelin is just in your face and <laughs> visually speaking as you're flying it because it's big. Uh, and that makes it an easier target. Because of that, we do have a higher chance of having uh, damage to our wings and our tail. So I have equipped control surface auto trim, which automatically restores controllability of wings and tail. The Javelin is also stated to have a vulnerable engine or vulnerable engines. Therefore, I have equipped automatic engine restarter. Our engines are our lifeblood in this aircraft. We have to uh, keep moving both as a tactical advantage and as a survivability issue. And also, sometimes we are attacking ground attack aircraft, and we definitely don't want to have our engines knocked out when we're close to the ground because we won't have time to recover. So automatic engine range starter, a must on this aircraft. And then kind of a non-negotiable consumable is engine cooling. Absolutely critical. It reduces engine overheating by 70%. Um, it is used manually because it's kind of a situational uh, consumable. And what that does is, you know, after we have used our long-lasting boost, you hit engine cooling and you're back up to the majority of your boost again. So if you need to uh, escape, you know, you can, that really comes in handy because there aren't many aircraft that are going to keep up with the Javelin or out climb the Javelin. Okay, looking at the aircraft's specifications, get these all expanded for you here. Optimum altitude is 3,000 meters, uh, and that is one of the highest optimum altitudes in the game. So you can attack from high altitude, and if you need to escape, you can climb higher than most aircraft in the game, the vast majority of aircraft. Optimum airspeed is 747 kilometers per hour, so it's a extremely fast aircraft. Uh, top speed at best altitude, 1,100 kilometers per hour. That's just <laughs> incredibly fast. And on the dive, it can get up to 1,200 kilometers per hour. Of course, this is the aircraft's weakness. Average time to turn 360 degrees, 15 seconds. Uh, so this is an abysmal turning aircraft. So you don't want to get into any close-in dogfights with any type of more maneuverable aircraft. You will definitely lose that engagement. If you find yourself, you know, fighting one of those aircraft, get distance and from it and then re-engage on terms that are more favorable to the aircraft. And that's the key with any one of these aircraft is don't fight the aircraft's strengths and weaknesses. Embrace them and play the aircraft uh, for its strengths and avoid its weaknesses. Don't try to turn an aircraft like this into a, a turn and burn fighter because it won't work. <laughs> it will be a futile effort. All right, so uh, looking at the paint schemes for this aircraft, you are currently looking at summer. That is winter. Desert. And finally, marine. I think probably summer is 
Summer or desert would be my favorite for this aircraft. Okay, so what we are going to do now is head over to World of Warplanes website and use their compare aircraft tool to compare the Javelin to its other tier 10 heavy fighter peers. So let's do that now. So we are here on World of Warplanes website using their awesome compare aircraft tool. And what I have done is lined up the only other two heavy fighters at tier 10 to compare against the Javelin. And I have gone into each one of these and made sure that they have been customized to their fullest extent. So we're looking at each aircraft uh, in the best light. And as always, I'll remind you that if you're doing this yourself, whatever aircraft you're uh, mainly concerned about, in this case the Javelin, you want to choose it last because by choosing it last it will be first on your list. Alright, so let's get into it here. Looking first at gun armaments, we see that the Javelin has a 17 point advantage over the XF-90 whereas the ME262HG3 has a three-point advantage over the Javelin. So let's uh, look at each one of these uh, aircraft and see why that may be. All right, so looking first at the Lockheed XF-90, an American heavy fighter, an excellent aircraft, by the way, really enjoy the XF-90. We see that it has six 20 millimeter cannons uh, as compared to the four 30 millimeter cannons of the Javelin. And if we look at that, the damage per second of the 20 millimeter cannons on the XF-90 are is 180 versus the 330 damage per second of the 30 millimeters on the Javelin. So even though uh, there are those two extra uh, cannons on the XF-90, they do not out damage the 30 millimeters of the Javelin. Now, I will say this, uh, and this is an important point to make, I think. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, as a pilot, I do struggle getting rounds on the target. I have found that the 20 millimeter cannons can actually be more effective for me than the 30 millimeter cannons. And the reason for that is that the 20 millimeter cannons have a rate of fire of 600 rounds per minute versus the 300 rounds per minute of the 30 millimeter cannons. So it is much easier to put rounds on the target with these 20 millimeter cannons than it is the 30 millimeter cannons. So that's kind of a uh, a factor to take into consideration uh, that is maybe outside of the pure damage numbers. Uh, also, these 20 millimeter cannons have an effective fire range of 820 meters versus the 800 meters of the 30 millimeters on the Javelin. So, you know, for me, if I had to choose between these six 20 millimeter cannons uh, on the XF-90 and the four 30 millimeter cannons on the Javelin, I would choose the 20 millimeter cannons. But that's, you know, of course, again, that's my, my personal predilection. Looking at the ME-262, which is an excellent aircraft, beautiful uh, aircraft as well. Uh, it has the four 30 millimeter cannons also. 
Now those cannons do 350 damage per second, so 20 damage per second more than the cannons on the javelin. Uh, also they have a higher rate of fire of 30 rounds per minute. The one drawback of these cannons is that their effective firing range is 800 meters shorter than the effective firing range of the 30 millimeters on the javelin. But that is why the uh, cannons on the ME-262 are said to have a slight advantage over the cannons on the javelin. Now, the javelin does not have any bombs or rockets, whereas the XF-90 does have uh, you can equip bombs on it, as also you can the ME-262. Now, you know, they're not particularly powerful bombs. Uh, there are only two of them on the XF-90. Well, they do 5,200 damage, which is not too, too terrible within a 75 meter radius, so um, not bad. However, the amount of times that you'll be using bombs on these heavy fighters, um, they're just not really that great in the ground attack roll. Um, so I don't know how much of a difference that really makes. The bombs on the ME-262 do 5,000 damage within a 75 meter radius. So if you want your heavy fighter to have the capability of some ground attack, um, you know, uh, the XF-90 and the ME-262 do have that advantage over the Javelin, but to me it's just not that significant of a, of a point. In terms of survivability, uh, the Javelin has a huge advantage over the XF-90 and the ME-262 by uh, 500 hit points. That's, that's pretty significant folks. Um, so definitely a factor to consider in favor of the Javelin. In terms of airspeed, uh, the XF-90 has a slight 10 kilometer per hour advantage over the Javelin, so not really uh, of significant uh, issue there. Uh, the ME-262 has a 40 kilometer per hour deficit as compared to the top speed at best altitude of the Javelin. Maximum dive speed, these aircraft are all uh, the same in that respect. Maneuverability, none of these aircraft are good at maneuvering. Uh, but time to turn uh, 360 degrees, the Lockheed XF-90 does have a one 0.9 second advantage over the Javelin. The ME-262 has the same uh, 360 degree turning time. Rate of roll, uh, both the XF-90 and the ME-262 have a slight advantage over the Javelin. Optimum airspeed, the XF-90 and the ME-262 uh, both have fairly significant advantages over the Javelin in that respect by 103 kilometers per hour for the XF-90 by 57 kilometers per hour for the ME-262. However, stall speed for the Javelin is better than the XF-90 or the ME-262, both of which will stall sooner than the javelin in the climb. Optimum altitude, the XF-90 and the javelin are both extremely high altitude aircraft, so probably one of the highest in the game. Um, however, the ME-262 has a 200 meter uh, deficit as compared to the javelin. Rate of climb, the Javelin has a higher rate of climb than either the XF-90 or the ME-262. So, 
you know, these aircraft are all, you know, pretty similar. Uh, however, I would say that the hit points advantage of the Javelin is just really significant. So I would say that would be one factor that sets the Javelin apart from either the XF-90 or the ME-262. All right, so I hope that has helped to put the Javelin in perspective with its Tier 10 peers. All right, so we will be defending in the Javelin over the Albion Attack on the Coast Theater of Operation. And what I like to do on these maps to begin with is to approach kind of in the center of everything and that allows us to pivot either to the north or to the south as the needs demand. Pilots, get ready for action. Let's go. So we're going to gain some altitude here, which is both our offensive and defensive strength. Of course, uh, our speed is also our strength in this aircraft. One thing I've noticed about the Javelin that I don't like and, and other similar large aircraft of this nature is that it does, the aircraft does tend to really fill up the screen and I find that that kind of decreases visibility. Swift here, which is a more maneuverable aircraft than ours. Those really super fast jets, you have to lead them quite a bit. attack aircraft here that we'll try to work on. Now you have to be very careful on dives like that. Uh, it is really easy to not be able to pull out of the dive and to crash, so you definitely want to start you your... Leave the airfield in the enemy's hand. You want to start pulling out of the dive sooner rather than later. We are an ideal aircraft to deal with these high survivability ground attack aircraft. So we are uh, likewise have good survivability and we have the strong cannons, the 30 millimeter cannons that help us to eat into that armor. You can see we're working on those ground attack aircraft pretty pretty well. I'm going to uh, gain some altitude here. Get back to our environment that we are best at. We have an ME-262 here. Definitely a threat to our aircraft. Okay, and what I'm going to do here is to climb straight up. I'm pretty sure that other aircraft is not going to be able to follow us up this high. So I hope it isn't. stalling out but we'll be able to swing back down and hopefully take out that swift that's the plan anyway I 
Just like that, folks. Alright, so we've got a fast mover here. Fortune our cannons there overheated or we would have been able to finish him off. And let's see what's going on here. We've got some more ground attack aircraft. So we're going to want to come down and help out with these. And again, we have to be so careful here of the... So we're going to have to start pulling up out of this dive. Get a little distance here. Attack this one. And we have to be very careful of these. This German ground attack aircraft, it has its rear guns are very powerful. There we go. Go for the lower health of ground attack aircraft. Always go for the lower health target. Okay. Gain some altitude here again. So we have an XF-90 here working on our some of our friendlies, so we'll see if we can't help out with that, actually. Let's deal with this ground attack aircraft. There we go. Now where did that XF-90 go? Our friendlies must have gotten it. So we'll move on here. The ground attack aircraft coming in. Taking it on the chin here. Let's see what we have here. We have a multi roll, and that is going to be our target, folks. Up oh, was going to be our target. Our friendly's got it. Good job. And we have that swift. This aircraft is definitely a threat to us. Much more maneuverable than we are. Fast mover like we are. Okay, whoa, we gotta be careful here that we don't crash into the ground. Watch those dives. We're gonna use our consumable. Leading is so important with these fast movers. I would really like to get that kill if I can. There we go. All right. We should be winning. There's nothing left. I don't know why we haven't won. Oh, there's one left, I see. OK. 
Okay, where is he? Uh, ground attack aircraft at full health. Sounds like a good job for us, doesn't it? Let's see if we can't finish this out, folks. We have to be very careful here. I'm proud of you, pilot. I was going to say home. we have to be careful because he could certainly drop a bomb on us. Alright, so... Guardian. Flying Paladin Badge. Winged Legend. Flying Guardian Badge. McGuire Medal. Number one spot on the team. Almost the highest grade rank. Subjugator. Effective Fire. And Flying Start. Let's head back and take a look at the after action report and see how we did overall. All right, so a nice little victory there. We were not destroyed even a single time. We were in combat for over nine minutes and in that time did over 15,000 in damaged aerial targets. Uh, took down 15 uh, aerial targets, so 15 kills. 11 of which were done while defending. Over 14,000 in combat points. Uh, the number one player on the enemy team was a bot, an XF-90, which, let's see here, shot down two aerial targets. Do you think they had enough ground attack aircraft in that match? Yeah, I think they had that uh, covered. Our second uh, on our team was a J7W3 that shot down two aerial targets. All right, so a very good result for this aircraft. Certainly uh, was a good opportunity to demonstrate what this aircraft is capable of. So folks, that is the Tier 10 British Gloucester Javelin Heavy Fighter. I hope you've really enjoyed this video, and if you get an opportunity to fly the Javelin, I hope you have great success.